Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Funsky. St. Louis got its first Ferris wheel in 1904, but the one that debuted at the World's Fair didn't stick around for long, like most of the infrastructure from that event. And these days, if St. Louisans want to ride on a Ferris wheel, they have a far more modern option. The St. Louis wheel made its debut last fall at Union Station. It offers climate-controlled cars, a musical soundtrack, and lovely views of downtown West. And on Friday, it celebrated its first National Ferris Wheel Day. The St. Louis wheel was hopping despite very cold weather, and a couple of our producers spoke with first-time riders about their impressions. Here's what some of them had to say just after deboarding. I liked it. I got—I was felt a little scared at first, but then it, it's good. And there actually is a great view of downtown, and it was a beautiful day to be in, in the car, so... Oh, it's a great day for it. It's so clear you can see everything, and it's nice that it's so warm when it's really cold outside. <laughs> oh, it's really nice. Um, um, you know, um, could definitely see farther than I thought. Uh, it was warm. Uh, the music was fun. <laughs> Classic hits. I'll ride the Very quiet, and I enjoyed the view. Very good view. What is something you saw that you didn't expect to see? We live in South City, so we were definitely like checking out, like, oh, there's that church spire by our house or whatever, you know. And then there was kind of a strange, small little mushroom-like cloud coming from like South, South uh, Illinois, Southern Illinois, and we were wondering what that was. <laughs> Football as well in Southern Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any, like, a really fond memory from Ferris wheels over the course of your life? Anything that comes to mind? Or maybe anything cr- kind of crazy that you did on a Ferris wheel? <laughs> yes, you don't swing them because your wife gets upset. When I was little, it was at a school picnic, and my sister-in-law came, and I wanted to go on the Ferris wheel, and they wouldn't let me go alone. And she said, I'll go with you if you don't swing the seat. I won't swing the seat. So when we got up to the top, I started swinging. She's just swinging. No, I'm not. It's doing it by itself. She said, well, I see you moving. And she never went with me again. And those were St. Louis wheel riders Natasha, Lacey, Alex, Janet, and Larry, and 91-year-old St. Louis native Addie. They spoke with producers Lara Hamden and Evie Hemphill on National Ferris Wheel Day Friday. And joining us in studio to talk about it is Karen Wilder. She's the general manager of the St. Louis Wheel. Karen, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. And to give us that historic perspective, we're also joined today by Jody Sowell. He's the managing director of strategic initiatives for the Missouri Historical Society. Society. Jody, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Good to see you again. So, Karen, as we mentioned, Friday was National Ferris Wheel Day. Did you see more visitors than on a normal Friday because of that? We did. We knew that with National Ferris Wheel Day and Valentine's Day that people would just come out to have a great time. So showing love for one another and for the Ferris Wheel. Now, the Ferris Wheel has been part of our skyline now for four months. What has the response been overall during that time? It has been overwhelmingly embracing and positive. Everyone is just so excited about it. Um, I believe it made the mayor's um, Christmas card and a photo shoot. People you hit the big time. <laughs> um, people just come out and they want to photograph it and they want to ride it. And I think that they're just glad that there's a nice shining light beacon in the skyline now. So the owners had projected ridership of about 750,000 people per year. Are you on track at this point to hit that? I think we are, yes. It's just, again, the crowds have been great and people are just loving it. So we want to hear from you. Have you rode the St. Louis wheel and what did 
you think. You can give us a call at 314-382-8255. That's 382-TALK. Or you can send us a tweet at STL on air or email us at talk at stlpublicradio.org. Now, Jody Sowell, I want to ask you for some historic perspective here. Looking at the St. Louis wheel that's now giving us rides up over the skyline today, how is that different than the original 1904 St. Louis wheel? Hmm. Well, I think it's uh, it's different in some ways, but also very similar. I mean, you talked about the sort of love of the wheel, and really, I think the wheel has sort of um, created a new reason to love St. Louis. I mean, people, I mentioned that I hadn't had a chance to ride it yet, but I've already taken visitors by to say, look at this and look how it changes the skyline and what it means for St. Louis. I think that original Ferris wheel, which was not just the first Ferris wheel in St. Louis, but the original Ferris wheel, uh, and we can talk about that history in a minute, I think it was a point of pride for St. Louisans. Uh, You know, when people were coming to the World's Fair, where the Ferris wheel was, this is really the first thing they see. This is the biggest thing on the landscape of this huge World's Fair that's drawing millions of people. And it provided that sort of pride in St. Louis. This is something that we want to show off to the whole world. And I think that's kind of what the St. Louis wheel is doing today. Now, you say it was like the biggest thing that they would see. Is it as tall as the St. Louis wheel that's there today? So the Ferris wheel at the 1904 World's Fair was 264 feet, which compares to... 200 feet. Oh, wow. So So, it was even bigger. So a little bit bigger. Uh, It had... 36 cars. How many cars are? And we have 42, but their cars were uh, much <laughs> larger. So the cars at the 1904 World's Fair could fit about 60 people. They were really like um, almost like trolley cars, if you can imagine that. So they could pack lots of people in. In fact, uh, sometimes they would even pack in animals. So horses would get into the cars. I don't think you're going to allow any horses. On we the try wheel. to stick to service animals only. Okay, okay very good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a monkey, once, speaking of animals, we don't need to tell all animal stories, but a monkey did once get loose at the 1904 Ferris wheel and sort of hopped on the different cars for a while. And so we also probably won't experience any of those moments at the St. Louis wheel. Let's hope not. <laughs> Now, the cars that you have on the St. Louis wheel, they're enclosed, they're climate controlled. Um, what were these these giant 60-seaters? These were pretty lavish, too. They were enclosed. They had seats that people could be in. There was, uh, there was even a special car for weddings so that people could get married on the, the Ferris wheel. Um, so they were pretty lavish for their day. I don't believe we're piping in classic hits uh, on the radio. There was not a soundtrack. There was not a soundtrack. But comparing this to the present day, Karen, I understand you've already had a wedding on the St. Louis wheel. We have. We've actually had a couple of weddings already where people will come and they'll bring their party. And um, obviously not a large wedding party. (laughs) Because how many people fit in your largest car? Up to eight. Okay. So, but they get on and they take their ride and they exchange their vows. And then when they come off, of course, everyone's just out there cheering and celebrating. And I think that's one of the great things about the wheel, right? Um, between gender reveals or, or weddings or proposals, um, the crowd in the, in the whole plaza gets in on it when it happens. And so just a sense of community and bringing people together. Now, Jody, you'd mentioned that this original Ferris wheel, um, this was the original Ferris wheel, but it was not built for the first time in St. Louis. It was built in Chicago. How did they get it from there to here? Sure. So it was built uh, for the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. And What Chicago was looking for was something that would compete with the Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. So in 1889, the Paris had a World's Fair and they debuted the Eiffel Tower, this huge tower. And so the architect of the Chicago World's Fair said, we need something just as big and just as spectacular. Lots of ideas came about. The one person suggested building a sort of cabin that was connected to like bungee cords that would have hundreds of people in. They would drop and it would swing like a bungee cord. Um, That's a nice. The uh, developer of the Eiffel Tower himself said, you know, I could come to America and build a slightly bigger tower for Chicago. Um, And actually, it was American engineers that said, we're not going to have someone from another country come in and build something. We need something that's American. And this guy named George Ferris said, I can build you a Ferris wheel. Hmm. Um, Now, there's still some debate about whether he was the first. There was another guy uh, named George Somers in New Jersey who developed something very similar to the Ferris wheel. It was made of wood. It was only 50 foot 
50 feet tall, but it was very similar. Um, George Ferris had actually taken a ride on that wheel and oh, then came to Chicago and said, I can create this. There's a story that he just came up with this idea and drew it on a napkin. Probably not quite right. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly nothing of the scale had ever been created, and it was a hit at the Chicago World's Fair. It was the first thing that people saw when they came to Chicago to go to the fair. It really became a symbol for the fair. And so when St. Louis was planning a fair, they said, maybe we can bring that Ferris wheel here to St. Louis. A little shocking because even then, St. Louis and Chicago were certainly rivals. So the idea that St. Louis would borrow something from Chicago for their World's Fair, still a little surprising. So did we have to give it back to Chicago at the end? <laughs> no. So uh, after the Chicago World's Fair, it was put up at near the Lincoln Park neighborhood. And it really wasn't working there. Um, and they sold it at auction to a Chicago construction company. And that Chicago construction company is what brought it here. Um, and then, no, there was never any plans for it to stay. Just like most of the World's Fair, the idea was put it up, have this grand experience, and then tear it down. And so it took a couple of years, but in 1906, uh, the Ferris wheel was dynamited. Um, mm -hmm and thus ended the story of the country's first official Ferris wheel. So we did get a question on Twitter, and I, I have a sense this is one of these urban legends that has long percolated in St. Louis myth. Uh, Stuart writes, thoughts on where the axle is rumored to be buried. We've, we've all heard this story that it might be in Forest Park. Jody, is there any truth to this? I thought it would be nice today if on your show I announced where the axle is buried. I think that would be nice, everyone too. everyone could go out with their shovels and we could start uh, digging it up. Let's uh, do it. Let's break some news here. <laughs> no, let's definitely not do that. Um, <laughs> so, yes, for as long as, uh, uh, pretty probably pretty much as soon as the wheel came down, there were these rumors that this huge 70-ton axle was buried somewhere in St. Louis. Um, there had been, during the war in 1943, a guy came out and said, I was on the construction crew. I know exactly where it is. Let's start digging. We can use this for scrap for the war efforts. Uh, they did start to dig on the golf course right there on Skinker. Uh, got about eight feet down. They did find some nuts. They found no bolts and no axle. Hmm. Um, we have had various archaeologists say, we think we know where it is. It's generally thought somewhere by the golf course, which is where uh, the the Ferris wheel was. Some people think it was closer to uh, where Skinker and Wydown are. Um, there are more and more people, though, who are coming forward saying, no, it was never buried. Uh, there are letters that show that the Chicago company that was responsible for tearing down the whole fair took the axle back to Chicago, cut it up for scrap. Um, Either way, whether it's buried or whether it went back to Chicago, we're probably never going to see that axle, and it's probably okay to uh, come to grips with that. Well, but if anyone does happen to know where it is, we'd love for them to let us know. Right, call we, you know, we're in the business of scoops here. Yeah, you can give us a call. Uh, but Karen, going back to you to get away from destruction and to construction, um, how do you just go about building a Ferris wheel? Do you have to order it from a Ferris wheel manufacturer? <laughs> you do. It, it is a wonderful combination of outside and and local businesses coming together to make it happen. The wheel itself is um, a partnership between European manufacturers and, and for this particular wheel, um, uh, an American manufacturer in actually Wichita, Kansas. So very close. So you, yeah, you go pick out your wheel. You do. You pick out your wheel and the gondolas you want and how many of each. And then you get together with some great construction talent in St. Louis to... To do all the boring stuff, right? <laughs> all the concrete that takes so long. And then um, everyone always remarked when I got here. So when I got here, they were doing the foundation work. And then once the pieces started to arrive, it went very quickly. And I said, well, that's how attractions work, right? It, the hard work is in the ground. It's all about the foundation. <laughs> yes. And then once the pieces arrive, it goes up so quickly. And just, just phenomenal talent. If you've never seen it happen, it's just watching them is like a beautifully choreographed dance to get the pieces in place and timed. Now, I'm a really nervous person around heights, and I, I did enjoy the St. Louis wheel, but it also freaked me out a little bit. And I was very happy to hear um, that you guys do testing every day for a couple hours. What what goes into that? Every day. One of my favorite stories is um, I had a coworker call me about six o'clock one morning. She said, there is someone on the wheel. And I said, 
yes, that's Joe. That's his job. <laughs> So we do. We have a maintenance team that climbs the wheel every single day to inspect every spoke, every nut, every bolt to make sure that it is perfectly safe for our guests. They then inspect every single gondola every day Mm. to make sure they are perfectly safe for our guests. So about a three hour process every morning before we ever open. Wow. Well, that is that. I feel much better knowing that. Um, We have time for just one last question today. And Jody, I'm wondering, maybe you have thoughts on this. This is kind of a gentle, slow moving ride compared to so much of modern entertainment. Why do you think Ferris wheels remain such a draw? I think, um, you know, I think one thing is some of what your listeners were saying is that view that you get from outside, that sort of look over the city that you couldn't get any other place. I mean, that's what the 1904 World's Fair Ferris wheel allowed. It allowed you to look at the whole World's Fair. Some people said that's how people plan their day is that they would go up in the World's Fair and sort of pick what they or go up in the Ferris wheel and pick where they wanted to go. Same is true with the wheel at Union Station is people get this different view of the city. But also, I think it does go back to that. Uh, it's It provides that sense of wonder that uh, you just don't get from many things. And when you do, you really want to latch on to it. Um, and I think that's what ties Ferris wheels from the 1904 World's Fair to Ferris wheels that maybe you saw at the Highlands Amusement Park or the Chain of Rocks Park or Six Flags or the City Museum or the wheel at Union Station is, is that sense of wonder. And what I get most excited about is that sense of pride in St. Louis. Well, Jody Sowell, Managing Director of Strategic Initiatives for the Missouri Historical Society, thank you for being here today. Thank you. And Karen Wilder, General Manager of the St. Louis Wheel, congratulations on an awesome launch. Thank you. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio. That's 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.